All right, chemists, what I'd like to do in this video is go through empirical and molecular formulas. So if you're having trouble with that, this is the video for you. Um, I've got Doc Brown and Sally Ann here to help me out. First thing, let's do the definitions. So let me get these all out of here. We'll start with empirical formula. So what's an empirical formula? An empirical formula is the simplest positive integer ratio of atoms present in a compound. So there's your definition. You might even see the word smallest right there. The key here is there's no decimals. So when you look at a compound like SO3, it's called sulfur trioxide, one sulfur, three oxygens. Beautiful covalent molecule. Next, sodium dichromate. Oh, you wouldn't believe what I've seen as a teacher, how many times I've seen that thing named wrong, but it is called sodium dichromate. Two sodium atoms to two chromium atoms to seven oxygen atoms. Again, can't reduce it anymore. So that is the simplest positive integer. Then we've got a fun organic molecule here called formaldehyde. So these are all what are called empirical formulas. Next, what does it mean then to have a molecular formula? So let me sneak these off. On comes this definition. All right, so let me start with a molecule I think you've heard of. This molecule is a, a C6H12O6. It is the exact number of atoms present in a compound that is not an empirical formula, it is a molecular formula, and that might be something you've heard of called glucose. Look at that. Then, here's another one. You want to see what's similar about these, okay? C3H6O3, the most common molecule that you might have heard of that has that molecular formula is lactic acid. Now, here comes the kicker. Here's another molecule that this is its molecular formula, deja vu, right? You've seen this one. That's formaldehyde. Now, what do you notice all three of these have in common? They have the same ratio. So the empirical formula for this one is that. The empirical formula for that one is this. So does, hopefully that helps you with what does it mean by the exact number. So these all have the same empirical formula. These are the molecular formulas, and that's different. You open up Pandora's box when you start to use carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens. That's why you can get a PhD in organic chemistry. Okay, off we go. Here are the rules. What I would do is I'd pause this video and write these rules down. So I'm gonna count to three. One, two, three, pause it. Write it down. Excellent. Now, if you're one of my students, how spoiled are they? They have this thing called a foldable, and they have the rules right here, and they can put their wonderful practice problems in class right there. Amazing. Next, here is our practice problem. First rule is you got to get the masses of the chemical you're starting with. So here's my problem. The masses are these percents. What I'm going to do is assume I have 100 grams of this unknown uh, compound, okay? I use P, Q, and R, and S because I feel like they never get used on the alphabet. We always use X, Y, Z, and A, B, C in algebra, huh? So the first I'm going to do is say, okay, well, if I have 100 grams of this unknown chemical, that means I have 49.48 grams of that carbon, okay? Next, I have 5.19 grams of my hydrogen, okay? Slide it down. 16.48 grams of my oxygen. Last but not least, I got nitrogen there. 28.85 grams of nitrogen, okay? First thing I wanna do is find the empirical formula. This molar mass, with my method, this method right here, I find like I'm not gonna use that till the end. There are a couple other ways out there to do it, but I like to save that to the end. That way these seven steps work for any problem you wanna solve. Step two is after you get the masses of each element, find the mole amount of those. I use kind of a fence post uh, kind of conversion. I kind of like this now. In the new digital age, this works great because you could make it look like a table and kind of hide, hide the outside. So the first we're going to do is we're going to convert grams of carbon into moles of carbon. And carbon has a molar mass of 12.01. You might be far enough in chemistry that you know that, otherwise you need a periodic table, okay? Next, hydrogen has a molar mass of 1.01 grams per one mole of hydrogen, number unit label people. Then uh, I'll use the 15.99 of oxygen per one mole of oxygen. Last but not least, I've got uh, Nitrogen is uh, 14, oh my goodness, I got a mistake here. 
That happens, right? 14.01. I don't know why I wrote 28 again. I need more coffee. Hang on a second here. I might just be falling asleep. Here we go, per one mole. Teachers make mistakes. Okay, off we go. So we're going to take 49.48 and we're going to divide it by 12.01, okay? So I'm just going to show you the first one, but then I'm just going to copy down the answer so that this video doesn't take too long, right? You don't want to get bored. That's how many moles of carbon. So then just trust me, I did the same thing again for each one of these. So for example, I took 5.19 and I divided it by 1.01. .01. Remember, if it's in the denominator, you divide. 5.1, uh, let's just round it to 4. We're going to keep it to 3 sig figs in the end anyway. We're going to ratio. So then the last two are this. The last one is 1.03 moles of oxygen. And then this guy here, the nitrogen is 2.06 moles of uh, nitrogen. There we go. Okay. Next, you're going to want to divide these by the smallest one. These are not great. So if you were to stop right now, this is going to look ridiculous. We're going to say we have like 4.12 carbon and we have 5.14 hydrogen. I mean, this is just looking ridiculous, right? 1.03 oxygen and then nitrogen's 2.06. That is not a simplest ratio. That's not an empirical formula. So the next step is you got to divide them by the small. So I'm going to divide them all by 1.03. Here's what that does. It's a little math trick that equals 1. Okay, so then what you're going to do, I'll just show you one of them here, 4.12 divided by 1.03, excellent, look at that, 4, we got lucky this time. This won't always happen, okay, alright people out there in chemistry, this is unusual, we're lucky here, let's just check if the rest have this happen, divided by 1.03, 4.99, again, unlikely, so we can pretty much round that to 5, this is great. And if you divide this by 1.03, come on, mathematicians, you know it's going to equal basically 1.99 or 2. So what does that really mean? Here's my formula so far. C4, H5, O, you don't usually put the 1, but let's put the 1. 1, and then N, and then 2. Now, we're not done. This, let me highlight it in the color that I used. This, oop, wrong color. This is a empirical formula, okay? We're not done. That's the lowest ratio of all of them. We could be done, but we're probably not. So what you're gonna do next is continue on with the steps. So I'm gonna continue on in a different color just so you can see it. So the molecular formula is the exact number of atoms present. So this could be it. You never know, we've been lucky so far. First thing I'm gonna do is find the molar mass of all of this. So I'm gonna do really fast. It's four times 12 grams per mole. I'm gonna round right now, okay? Don't worry, people, it's gonna be fine. Five times one gram per mole. Um, and then oxygen is one times, let's just do 16. Two times, again, let me get this right here, 14. I don't know what I was thinking before with the 20 some. Maybe I was thinking it was diatomic. Then you add this all up, and you're going to get this magical, wonderful total of about 97, okay? With a little odd change in decibels. So let's go back to the problem, though. Our compound has a molecular weight of 194. That's not 194. So you're going to need steps 6 and 7. Again, if you haven't written these steps down, you know, maybe now you think you need them. There they are. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 197, and I'll use the exact, you know, 0.19, and we're going to divide that by this number, which is 97, and you're going to get that this pretty much equals 2. Now, what in the world does that mean? It means this is not our unknown molecule. It's two times bigger than that, so it's C8H10O2N4. So I took every single subscript here, and I multiplied them by 2. You know what this is? Kind of gave you some hints at the very beginning. Now there's not hydrogen shown here, you'll see that in organic chemistry, but it's caffeine. So I'm gonna end the video there and have a little sip of caffeine and say, you know what? Go forth, calculate some molecular empiricals on your own. Good luck, chemists.